I am Ana Falou. I'm a professor and researcher at the National University of Cordoba, Argentina, my homeland. I'm going to give you a lecture today on gender perspective in urban planning. To start, I want to quote Hannah Arendt, and she says that the city is an organized memory, and in history, women are the forgotten. And this is the central issue I want to address. Women are omitted, omitted in planning, or have very little participation in the decision-making related to cities, housing, or planning decisions. Then two main questions comes out of this, uh, out of this. and the first one is, what is the impact? of this omission in city planning. And the second one is vis-a-vis -vis this a persistency of the sexual division of labor, how this sexual division of labor impacts in the urban form, in the accessibility, in the facilities, in the public spaces, in the urban violence. Then I have three departing assumptions. The first one is that the city is not experienced or lived in the same way by men or women. The second one is that the urban assets are not equally accessible, neither equally in quality or in supply to all the citizens. Third is that due to these inequalities, women face greater vulnerabilities than men. The themes I want to address will be the transformation of the city, the inequalities, because we cannot talk about gen gender planning without thinking or framing it in the transformation of the cities, particularly in Latin America, the social demographic transformations, the se sexual division of labor, and then the corpus will be the omission of women in urban planning. Let's go to the first uh, very briefly and very in, in, in uh, just to give a frame to lack in the world urbanization process. We know that urbanization is an opportunity, and, but, but also we have to say that in this city transformation, the transformation that cities, particularly in Latin America, uh, are, are suffering or are living since the 19th by the, 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 the hand of the global processes, uh, also meant social and economic inequalities in the territory and a strong urban segregation and fermentation. We can see in these pictures, and this is addressing to Caracas, Venezuela, and to Sao Paulo, Brazil, but could be any city of Latin America. Could be Buenos Aires with, with Villa 31, a very well-known Villa that is by the very rich part of the city of Buenos Aires. And also we can see the inequality because lack is urban, unequal, diverse. We have 550 million inhabitants and 82% are urban. In Argentina, my home country, we have 92% of the population urban. So this is the main challenge, inequality. It's not only poverty, but inequality. And that is measured with the Gini index. And you can see in the picture, we are the champions of inequality when compared. But then, what is the paradox that we are living? We are in a region that all the indicators are promissory. It seems that we are improving. We have a lot of uh, urban population, the majority, the absolute majority is living in cities. We have diminishing poverty. We are taking the period 1990 to 2009, and you can see that we decreased from 41.4% to 27.8%. Just imagine, only Brazil in the last uh, decade uh, succeeded in taking 40 millions of people out of poverty. So these are very good news in the region. The major paradox is that in the same period, women increase in poverty. While the population of Latin America went out of poverty, women increased. The number of women in poverty increased in the last decade. And this is one that I want you to keep in mind. The second thing I want to say is that women are not equal. We are not only equal. Women are cross-cut by differences. Differences of class, of income, of education, of, of sexual option, of race, of ethnicity of places where we live, the territories where we live. It's a very important difference that is cross-cutting being woman in society. And all we are worthy of public attention. But nevertheless, there are some ones that are more worthy than others. 
For instance, if we take the intersection of racism and sexism, we know those are structural to inequity. It produces a, a different forms of subordination, particularly among the black and indigenous people in, in Latin America. You can see this graphic. This graphic is coming out of an official data study that is the portrayal of inequality in Brazil. For men and women that have the same level of education in the equal type of jobs, you can see the, the red line goes for men and the blue for women. The two first are white and the two below are black. Black women have a gap, consistent, important gap in income for the same type of labor than men. So these are the, the, the points I wanted to make to you. And when we move to the social de the, the demographic uh, transformation, we have to say we have a diversity of social actors in, in our society. Well, not only there is a diversity of social actors, but also the household size are different. I mean, if you take the different income sections, you will see that the poor women have the more than the double of children than the rich woman in Brazil. I'm taking Brazil because Brazil is in this moment the seventh uh, seven country in richness in the world. Then why we're talking about women? The barriers and the challenges. We need to know who people are, age, sex, etc. We need to know what people have, the owning, income, housing, water, etc. And we need to know where people live, lives in which territories. They live in central degraded areas, in slums, in residential zones. That will make the difference. Then this is our point, how it affects and how it will impact city planning. The difference that the women and men have in society because of their role, their responsibility. And then I want to propose you to revisit urban planning. And what I'm saying, I'm saying that life in cities, both for men and women, is related to their experiences in the territory where they live and, and their act. And gender relations are constituent of the social relation, and it seems they are expressed also in the territory. And again, again, the latter, in turn is manifesting, the territory is manifesting and reproducing these differences of gender, the differences of women and men in the territory. Let's try to see some. Accessibility service and facility. And accessibility needs a gender approach. We must incorporate knowledge about the differentiated needs of displacement of men and women in the city. The sexual division of labor means that women are the caregiving. And if women are the care women, women are the ones that use the city in a different way than men. Men with routines and with more linear connections, and women with short interconnected, fragmented routes connecting different needs where childcare, elderly handicaps, uh, shopping, etc., etc. So the cost of that is not only the economic cost, it's not only the money, it's the time eating, it's the, the fear. And we have some experiences, this is the metro in Mexico, the EFE, and we need to know how it makes a, a, a proposal of policy that will uh, consider the distances and the location of, of women and, uh, and work and having an and positive action policy of a, a service only for women in the peak hours, affordable, safe, not with no cultural barrier and with quality and with nodes that will connect in the future, let's hope, childcare, assistance for, for, for legal assistance, etc. Which are the barriers and the challenges? The barriers are the, the conditions of urban corridor, those streets, those paths, the physical obstacle, the need of clear information, of visibility of the lighting, the signs, the protection of the, the weather inclement, the transparency for security, people need to be seen, see and be seen, the time schedule, etc., etc. Women are using more the public transport than men, because if there is a vehicle, a horse, a bicycle or a car, men will have the privilege to use it. A second point I want to make in this uh, dimension of planning is public spaces. What are public spaces? They are defined by use, as Olga Segovia says, the meeting places, the places of socialization, of political action, of the cultural uh, events. And women are 
much more frequent users of the neighborhood public spaces, much more than the, those spaces at the scale of the city. Why? We need to know, we, we need to research, because they are closer, because the cost of travel, because they move with children and, and adults, because we need to know. And what about community facilities and social infrastructure? Jane Jacobs said, in the 60s, yeah, the, that the concept should be proximity. The concept of proximity, because women are again, once more, the main user of the community facilities. And they need the proximity so they can walk to, the, to those uh, facilities and to those social infractures. And also I want to point that those are social responsibilities, the social respo claiming the social responsibility of care. And I want to make my last point, and that is violence and discrimination in the public space. I have a book and you can, uh, you can look at it in, in, the, in the web, but what I want to make is just some point, that violence affects the everyday life of women. It is a limit to their freedom. And as Olga Segovia and the Skull says in their book, the contents of social construction of insecurity, the abandonment of public spaces, and the retreat to the supposedly protected spaces where women suffer more violence even than in the public, it seems that generates more insecurity. It's a a, a circle, a vicious circle, the abandonment of public spaces and the fear, which are the consequences of violence against women, the restriction on their freedom, the bodies of women are the first territory. If women do not have a empowerment on their bodies, it's difficult that they will have power on the, the house, the neighborhood, or the city. And those bodies of women that are bodies of resistances are the first territories of violence. Those bodies that are, that, that turn into political bodies when they denounce the violence they suffer. So those bodies are the base of domination. We have instrument. We need more knowledge, but we have instrument. Observatories, the safety security audit map, the, here is an example. And I'm going to close just showing you one tool. A very efficient tool, a very cheap tool. Again, information is critical. You see two maps in here, and the maps are on sexual uh, sexual violence. And this is done by the government, by the official data, with official data of the city of Bogota. Well, you see the, the yellow one, the yellow one are women, of course. And the other one, the lighter yellow one, with the, with the scarce points, is men. One is hombres and mujeres. And you know which is the age of the men? Child or teenager, while the range of age in women is much more wider. Of course, there is a group more vulnerable. Let's say that the violence that women suffer is completely uh, arbitrary. It can it happens to any woman of any sector, of any class, of any, uh, uh, of any, uh, ter in any territory. What I'm trying to say, we have some learning, we need much more, but we have some learning, information, a statistic, observatory, how reference violence is, training to technicians, uh, and we need to enhance planning decision, to articulate challenging dimensions of security and network of transport infrastructure, etc. The main issue is localization, localization, localization. Proximity, proximity, proximity. Participation, participation, participation. Resources. Thank you.